Welcome back, everybody, to the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast, folks. Today we got a busy show ahead. Uh, we're going to be delving into a bit of rumors surrounding Trevor Zegras and potentially going to the Montreal Canadiens. We're going to give our thoughts about that. Uh, we're also going to be talking about Rocco's Riser of the Week, as per usual. We're going to get into our prospect of the week later on, and to cap it all off for you Habs fans, we got we got to give credit to our Habs prospect of the week. So let's get to it. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Recruits Draft Cast. And with the first overall selection in the 2023 NHL Draft, the Chicago Blackhawks are very proud to select from the Regina Pats, the Western Hockey League, Connor Bedard. The sickest NHL draft and scouting podcast. It's going to be sick. All right, I am your host, Producer Shane. Uh, and and first and foremost, I got to say thank you to the gentleman by my side who took over last week in my absence. If you haven't seen that video yet, go check it out. They delve into their midterm rankings for this year's draft. So as always, joined by the amazing Grant McCagg and amazing Rocco Zappia. Fellas, how we doing? Great. How you doing? How was your vacation? Fantastic. Fantastic. I, I got away from Grant for a week, so I can't complain. You know? <laughs> Doesn't look like you got much sun. Uh, I, 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 you should see my shoulders. They were pretty burnt there, but. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to be back. I missed this. I miss talking to you guys and talking hockey. So uh, yeah. we, we'll just get right into it and talk about Trevor Zegras, whose name has been in the rumor mill for quite some time now and, and often associated with the Habs. Now, the opinion is very mixed uh, among the fan base. Some people don't think he's worth trading for at all. Some think the price is too high. Some think that the Habs should go all in. Like Craig Button yesterday on the Tony Marinaro podcast, you should go check that out if you haven't, he said that he'd be all in. He said that the Habs should absolutely go for Trevor Zegers. So, uh, Grant, we'll start with you. What do you think about Trevor <laughs> Zegers to Montreal? Give us your thoughts. Two thumbs down. Okay. <laughs> no hesitation. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I mean, the price would be high, right? Um, the, even though he's like, uh, his trade value should be low right now. What's he on pace for, uh, like over 82 games, 16 goals and 12 assists, 28 points this year. Now it seems like everyone wants to just ignore that and only look at his point totals for the two previous years. Well, how do you, how do you ignore what he's doing right now? Yeah, you can't. And part of it is because, I you know, uh, I mean, uh, guys have come in like Carlson, who the club already thinks is going to be better and have taken his first line spot on the club at 18 years of age. So, um, you know, one of the re main reasons why he's not putting up a lot of points is because he's already getting passed by guys on the depth chart. Like... Uh, Petrano, McTavish, and Carlson are all ahead of him for sure. And uh, so what if he goes to a team with Doc, Slavkowski, Caulfield, Suzuki? I see a lot of people saying, oh, well, he's going to be on the first line with the Habs. Well, there's four guys that, I, that are better than him, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, right off the bat. They draft another forward top 10 this year this year there all of a sudden he's sixth so for sixth on your depth chart do you trade the ghouli and the first round pick and i think he'd be crazy you know yeah yeah um what do you think uh rocco a few different things for me it really depends there's a few different factors with zegris one is what's the return what's it going to cost you to get the second thing is what's he going to want long-term money-wise? How does he fit in there into your cap structure? The third thing is, do you think he's a center or do you think he's a winger? For for me, that's not a guy I want down the middle. So for me, I'd rather have him on the wing. And the fourth thing um, is, is he going to grow up a little bit? Because 
Yeah. He holds himself back. I think um, his talent, his t- his talent is undeniable. He's out of this world skilled, but he doesn't play a winning brand of hockey. And guys can mature at different times, but he needs to. So if you think he can do that, and you think you can fit him into your cap structure, and you think the return of what you have to give up to get him is, is you can stomach it. You think about it because he does have the skill, but he needs someone, I think, to work with him and bring out the best. Because right now, I don't know, like they're trading him for a reason, right? So I don't know as he stands now, if that's a guy that that helps you get deep, deep into the spring, into the summer months, right? On a deep playoff run. So there's, there's more questions and answers with him for me. Yeah. I'm not the biggest Trevor Zegers fan in the world. Just not my style. Of, of hockey, but the, the, the talents there, someone's going to take a chance on him. But again, you really have to believe in what you think or what you know you're getting out of him. Uh, because I think, I think he does need to change certain things in order to become the best version of, of himself as a player. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, from what we've been hearing, the asking price is astronomical. You know, it's, it's, it's starting off with, multiple first round picks and then some right so at that point i i think any any rational fan would say no grant because rocco like you mentioned there there are so many questions you don't know what you're going to be getting right uh so it, at that point like if if that is truly the asking price the answer should be no now what However, what, kind of, what kind of first round picks are we talking though are we talking top 15 picks you know, or picks 28 to 32. Cause there's, there's a, there's a big difference, I think. Yeah. So well, let's, it's let's assume it's, it, it, yeah. it's going to be a fairly high pick, you know? Yeah. Uh, if, I mean, uh, we've got a, we did a video or, or I did, I did up a video just quickly before we came on air there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I was going to do a video of his uh, scoring highlights, but it only, be, it would only been about 20, 20 seconds long this year considering that he's got seven points, but here is just an, just to give you an indication of how quickly he passes the puck when anybody goes to hit him and then how slow he is getting back without the puck. It just drives me crazy. He's going to be in the bench. He'd be on the bench on a, on any kind of a playoff contender, like instantly if he plays like he, like in all these clips, you just watch him without the puck and he just has no interest whatsoever Look at how quickly he just, as soon as he's uh, anyone's around him that's going to hit him, he just dishes the puck off just as quickly as he can because he does not want to get hit. Now, how is that going to, how is that going to fly in a playoff game? Here, he gets the puck along the boards here. Oh, someone's going to hit him. Well, got to turn it over, you know, and it's almost instant. And then he just loafs afterwards. Like I just, uh, I'm not a fan, of, just like Rocco. I'm not a fan of his style of play, you know. And it, it, and the part of it is, he's one of those guys that will score a highlight real goal once every 20, 30, 40 games, and people just remember that, right? And they think, oh wow, he's just so skilled. Yeah, he's so skilled. Once every forty games, he'll get a beautiful goal. How how does that help you win? It's uh, it's still just one goal in one game, but oh, because it he it, it's so beautiful, it's so skilled that you know people put him on a pedestal that I don't think he deserves to be on. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. look at the back check here, and this guy scores as a as a and center, then, and then he cross checks him in behind yeah. and gets a penalty after that, and they score again. How is that helping a team win? Here he is again. Oh, someone's going to hit me. I'll just, I better dump it to the other team. He's got that back pass that he does soon as anybody's close to him that just to nowhere. And then he does it again, twice in the same shift. Like I just, uh, not a fan of, uh, his style of play. There it is again, the back pass to nobody. Cause he, somebody might've, somebody was close to him and Paris had thought that he get hit and there. He didn't back check again. Lucky that they didn't score. Here he gets it behind the net, and no, oh, better backhand it to the other team because uh, someone might hit me. So I don't like. Okay, guys, I've seen enough. 
That's that's great. <laughs> <laughs> it goes on, it goes on for another minute or two, but you get the idea, right? No, that's, that's all. Not. Those are highlights from this year. They came with four goals and three assists. Mm -hmm. So he's trending downward. Now, who's to say he's going to be uh, an eighty-point scorer? I based on this year and what you're seeing. Uh, I, uh, you know, especially on a contender, he's going to be at best on your second line, I think, because he doesn't bring enough checking ability to be to be against first line forwards on another team. And if you notice on in those highlights, like he's not very good. He's not he's not only not a very good center because he doesn't back check very well, but I don't think he's a fantastic winger either because he gets the puck along the boards and anyone's going to hit him. He dishes it right away to the other team, and he doesn't like to take hits. He doesn't hit himself. He's on pace for uh, 30 hits, 33 hits over 80 games this year. I, I don't know. I, I think he, as much as I liked him in his draft year because he was on a great team and they won and uh, he was part of it and you could see the skill, uh, it wasn't because he was the best player. Like, you know, Hughes and Caulfield drove that team. And um, maybe as a secondary guy, you know, a, a 50 to 80 point scorer on your second line. Well, what's that worth? You know, is that worth multiple first round picks and a prospect? Not for me, because as far as I'm concerned, you can find that with a with a first round pick anywhere from 15 to 30. So I'd be uh, I'd be staring clear, especially if the asking price is as high as people are saying. And the, th the thing that you said, Grant, is is on a contender. What is he on a contender? And is he going to score 80 points on a contender? Because he's a guy that I can maybe, like, might just might just be the most offensive, force-fed minutes, first power play on, on bad teams all the time. And the counting stats kind of look good because he's putting up numbers, but someone has to put up numbers on a team. But, like, how does he help you win? And, and does, he, does he go deep? on a Stanley cup winning team. There, there's two kinds of guys. There's guys you'd want to play with and there's guys you'd want to play against. And I'd rather play against him. And that's not, it's not a compliment. I want guys that other teams want nothing to do with playing against them. And there's guys that can bring the skill elements and put up 65 points, but do a lot more on the ice too. And contracts are given out primarily based on on point totals and to me it just could be a guy that that you know puts up numbers and gets paid and you don't like you don't like what you're getting for the money and there's more than just who's better in a cap world it's you know you have to be good and you have to be on fair deals too so that's another consideration with, with him that might you know a little bit down the road it's okay how much is this guy getting paid relative to what he's bringing to the table and i yeah he's just i don't i don't have any time for soft players so that's it. No, I mean, and, and you also have to consider whose place would he be taking, right? Is he that much of an improvement on um, a Joshua Roy, a, an Owen Beck, a, a, a Philip Meshar, whoever the Habs draft in the, you know, in the top 10 this year, would he really be that much of an improvement? And would you be willing to give up that much to get that improvement, if any? It's it, That's why I think the asking price is way too high, way, way too high if – it does come down. I don't have, you know, uh, a proposal in mind, but if it does come down to a reasonable price, I'd entertain it personally because the upside, the offensive upside is there. And I trust the coaching staff to put him in a position to succeed, but I would never pay two first round picks. Never. So yeah. let me throw it over to you guys. What would be an appropriate price? Do you think for him? Like, um, a a mid, a mid first and a, and a, and a B level prospect, maybe like maybe get it done. So maybe, and yeah. maybe, maybe like a lower end roster player to go with it, mm -hmm. but I'm not, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up a top 10 pick this year. Plus, yeah. and especially if you're talking a, a big defenseman like Gooley, like, I don't know if I would do that one for one. Never. So, so I don't, yeah. You know, I'm probably not trading for him if if I'm a GM. If the price is even even remotely close to what 
to what's being thrown out there. Um, it's just, just kind of, Hey, and everyone has different opinions on the guy and that's, and that's fine. It's just wouldn't be, wouldn't be my cup of tea. The assets could be spent better elsewhere. If he was averaging a point a game this year, maybe you consider. He's been hurt. Know. He has been hurt this year. Yeah. So his point total. Right. Like, right. He like, seven point, like he's on pace for 28 points over 82 games. So like, there's a question mark of whether he'll ever be a point per game guy, even if you did play him on the first line, because there's there's no he played on the first line on on poor teams in Anaheim, right? Well, on a decent team, like I don't see him being on the first line in Montreal if he came up. Who does he replace? He's not better than the three guys that are no. there. So, um, the, there's just no way that he's a better player than Slavkovsky. He's just not. You know, no. Slavkovsky brings so much more to the table. And if it's just points that you're interested in, that's fine. But even th there's a question mark with that. And even if he did end up being a point-per-game player, uh, which I, I question, um, especially on a good team, what else does he bring? Like, he, th there are character questions, and uh, it's one of the reasons why I think that he's on the trade block. Uh, I had a guy that was connected with Hawk Canada the year that Zegers beat, they beat them in the, uh, uh, it was it the U18s? Or, no, no, the World Juniors. And, you know, like he pointed out, he said, did you notice that nobody really went and congratulated Zegers when he scored the, the goal, you know, the big goal? His teammate, he said he, the teammates didn't like him. And, uh, I mean, I don't know if that's the case, uh, and I don't know if it's the case in Anaheim, but if he was a true character guy, uh, you know, and he had all this offensive potential, why would they be, as, as Rocco says, why would they have him on the trade block? So there's stuff they know that we don't know, right? Um, you know, if he's a point-per-game uh, potential guy, that that's good in the dressing room and all that dude who's early twenties. Why, why would you want to trade that guy? So I don't know why Habs fans are so hell bent on trying to get this guy. Cause I, first of all, I don't think that he fits the blueprint for what they're trying to build there. I, I mean, chemistry is so important. You get a kid, you get a team that's tight and it's grown together has no prima dominance on it, and then you bring one in, that can screw things completely up on a team. Well, it really can. So That's the I biggest think, thing that shows off for me when I – just you watch his body language on the ice, off the ice, when he talks in interviews, nonchalant, a little bit cocky, I think, maybe a lot cocky. Um, <laughs> I just – I don't – just rubs me the wrong way. And it's not to say he, he's very young. And guys mm -hmm. will mature at different ages, and maybe one day the maturity will be there. But they're trading him for a reason, and the skill, this year aside, the last two years, the skill has been plainly evident. So why? Why are you eager to? Why are you eager to move him if he's 22, 23, whatever, however old he is, under 25, and all this ability and potential and, and skill, you can see it. Why? Why would you move that? So th there's a reason that that kind of scares me a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And you see the skill only on occasion, too. It's not like I've never watched a game where he was pulling skilled moves all game long and was driving to play and just, you know, playing well defensively and just a difference maker out there you see flashes and you've always just seen flashes of it with him. And that to me is not a guy that helps you win cups. It's a guy that is going to make the highlight reel once a month or once a mm -hmm. week for a team. But is he going to help you win a playoff time? I don't know. I How, I, how, how did it work out for the Hubs when they went and got Drew? Eh? Right. Pretty yeah. well. Two <laughs> cups. For so, Sergeyev. For right? So you want to do that again by giving up Wooly now for Zegers? Well, like, come on. Yeah, there's a bit of a, you know. There's another, they're not the same player, but again, just a high, high, high skill guy, you know, that just 
doesn't yeah. find a way to fit there for for whatever reason. Yeah. Well, if, if the I don't think the Canadians are as starving uh, for offensive talent as again, you got to be patient. There's some guys coming. They're getting a top ten pick. Doc will be back next year. All three of the guys on the first line are under 24 years of age. So it's not like they're bereft of offensive skill, unlike what a lot of people. I think because for 30 years they were, people still think that that's the case, but it's not. The Canadians have have a, have a fair bit of offensive skill, and there's some coming, including the top 10 pick this year, which I'm sure they're going to use on a, on a forward. Perhaps uh, Aginla, what would you think of that? Oh, break, it'd break my heart to have to play against that guy. Although, again, again, in the same division as the Kachuk brothers, I know they're different, but it would just be cool because they're legacy names kind of thing. Cool. But yeah. Kirby, Kirby Dak, I feel, I feel bad for that guy, man. What a player. He just can't stay healthy. I've always been a, I've always been a really big Kirby Dak fan. He's big, he's smart, he can really move, but huh, poor guy just can't put 82 yeah. games together and, and, you, you wish you wish he could because he he seems like he's one of the good guys on that team and he's got so much so much ability that he hasn't had the opportunity to to kind of develop which is which is sad but if he ever is able to stay healthy I mean that's a hell of a, hell of a player on your second line. Yeah. Tyler Boucher got hurt again. Speaking of guys that can't st- stay healthy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. What do you like? <laughs> <laughs> no I, comments. You, you feel like you like I don't mind I got time for Tyler I have time for Tyler Boucher as a, as a prospect when he when he's healthy and he's playing at his best but you, you never get to see it because he's always hurt it's just it's tough yeah. it's tough that's yeah. it well it's it's a very interesting conversation uh one that we could stretch out for a whole show but we got more things to cover here so let us know in the comments if you would trade for Trevor Zegas and what you'd be willing to give up we want to hear from you. Now, it's time for Rocco's riser of the week. This week is Miguel Marquez. Talk to us about him. Yeah. We got, <laughs> they, were call, they were calling him Marcus. They were calling him. <laughs> there we go. They were calling him Marcus in the broadcast. So I'm going to go with Miguel Marcus. Uh, mm-hmm. Left winger, uh, left bridge Hurricanes, number 14 there. 5'11", 173. Might be a little shorter than that. It's what he's listed. Uh, yeah. Might be 5'11", if you like him, sort of thing. <laughs> 59, 59 games played this year. He's got 22 goals, 37 assists, and 47 PIMs added to that, too. Now, his team is, they're just okay. They're at the very bottom, might sneak into the playoffs. They're in 16th out of 22 right now. But he leads them in goals, assists, and points as a draft eligible. So that, that says something to me. Um, he's able to produce on a lesser team. This game here is versus uh, the Saskatoon Blades. They're in first place. That's why I chose this game. So at least you're seeing them against some, you know, the best team in the dub. Uh, so give you a good indication against some higher skilled players. Plus skater, not elite, but good quickness. Um, I think that'll be an asset for him. And he, he combines it with a really good motor for the most part. Most shifts, there's a couple inconsistencies at times that I didn't love. But for the most part, very good motor out there. So he's got the good quickness, not the fastest straight line skater. He might not burn you on a breakaway or gain that sort of separation, but he is quick and he works hard. Got got some edge to him as well in his game. He's not soft by any means at all. Uh, he battles hard in the corners. He will lay the body on guys. He's unlike Zegers. He's willing to take a hit to make a play when he needs to. He'll hold on to the puck and and really wait for the play to develop and wait for the right lane to open up. And he'll hold that puck as long as he needs to, even if it means he's going to get hit, if it means his guy can get a clear lane. So you like that because he's not afraid out there. And as a smaller guy, that's that's really important to kind of have those have those balls to to be able to go up against bigger guys, especially when you get to the to the pro level. Now, as far as offensive ability, I'd say more of a playmaker than than a shooter for sure. He definitely seems to be more of a pass first guy in the in the games that I've watched, but but not to the not to the point that he defers a really good shooting chance. If he if he has a good shooting chance, he'll, he'll take a shot. His shots, it's fine. It's not it's not elite. It's not going to hold him back. It's he can he can shoot the puck at the NHL level, but and that's not a bad thing. Just average at that next level but his playmaking is 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 more of a plus there i found that he has pretty good vision creativity 
although a couple times he could force it a little bit trying to hit more of a cuter pass that might not have been there that you might have to work that out of his game a little bit but he has the ability to do it and he, and, and oftentimes he does end up making really really nice plays with the puck you'll see it in this third period here especially there's a couple instances where he makes really nice quick little plays to, to guys to the trailer hits high guys and when I'm they're coming in so you like his playmaking he gives a good two-way effort as well you saw it more in the earlier clips where he'd, he'd really hustle back forced a couple turnovers had a good stick doesn't give up on the play so so that's good especially again I don't want to hold it against him too much but especially as a smaller guy he does need to do more than he would if he was 6'2". So you like that he has that heart and that effort level, not just offensively, but he gives it in, in all three zones. And, and that's good because he, he's giving you an honest effort both sides of the puck and he's still leading your team in, in goals and assists. So other than his size, he can be guilty a little bit of maybe trying to fly by a defender and force a turnover with with a poke check versus breaking him down or, or throwing the body. But I think that's something that it's not like a red flag for me because I think the rest of his game is pretty well rounded for for a teenage winger and and the, the few instances where you want better decisions I think that can be coached out of him. I don't see any hockey sense. I actually like his hockey sense for the most part. Uh, when he doesn't have the puck in the offensive zone, he does a really nice job, typically of kind of just sneaking around kind of one push backwards, one push to the side, just trying to find little lanes for himself where he can open up. And, and and get a puck he does actually he's doing it right now this is a perfect clip because he does a nice job always facing the puck creating a lane for himself getting a nice shot on goal so i don't think this is a guy that we're talking about anywhere near you know first round consideration that's not where he is for me but when you, when you get into that 50 to 75 range i think that he's a guy that, that you can talk about because you know he's not the biggest and that's fine we'll get past that and he brings a lot of things that, that are projectable. It's like, okay, if he doesn't hit as a as a scoring line player, he is willing to do other things that you can kind of project him more as a, as a middle six. I could see him being a, a half decent third liner, but again, there are there are some holes in the scheme. But we're we're at the point in the draft where the players have have flaws and and not you know over half of them after fifty aren't aren't going to make aren't going to make the league. But he does have some things that you like. And I, I think with the right development, you know, he, he's worth taking somewhere in that late second to early third range. So not really a riser per se, but a, a, a no. good guy. Like he just hadn't really. Had yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not, not necessarily. Like he's not flying up. He's not flying up the list, but someone I hadn't really paid attention to that. I watch his game and I watched him earlier in the season. He, he stood out offensively. Um, but I'm like, I didn't give this kid another look and then kind of pay more attention to, to his complete game. Um, and, you know, you see his point totals and his size, and I'm like, okay, maybe could just be another small skilled winger. But I think he's a little bit more than that, um, which, which you like to see because at, at, at 5'11", you know, you got to have heart and you got to have nuts. And I think he has those two things, and that'll give him a chance. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I've been at this a while, and just going off video, he looks 5'10" you know <laughs> well that's yeah that's what i mean five eleven, five eleven, if you like him and, and that's what his team will that's where him. yeah like yeah uh, i go fine. off the central lists because they're you know they typically uh measure these guys and i don't know if you looked at that or not but i think he's measured at 510 but 510 i could be wrong on that so but, but if anyway. you need, at 510 if you can get up to 190 pounds or so then i mean well he looks thick yeah, no, he's well, he's one seventy five already, so he's not he's not a he's not a, a like a tiny small little no, frail, no, frail no. guy. He's, he's filling out, so you, you get up and you know you don't want to play at one seventy five, but you get up to that one eighty five, one ninety, one ninety five range, and he'll oh. be very very comfortable in around in around that. And I, I don't think I don't think you know the physicality of the game is is gonna is gonna hurt him. He's 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 not just a small skilled skilled winger, which. You know, you look at his point totals, and you might maybe would have thought that, but he plays hard and he's solid. He's sick. He he'll throw his body, and you know, I have no issues really with with how he plays, and he, he's got a chance. He's got a chance to play. Right on. All right, Miguel Marcus, Broncos riser of the week. Great stuff. Now we move on to our prospect of the week. This week is being Miroslav Holinka. Grant, take it over. Yeah. 
here he is uh, in the tournament. You can see I started to do clips. Uh, he scored a nice goal there, but uh, didn't do too many because, I mean, look at that. Y you're looking through netting, and it's about mm. seven, you know, <laughs> 480 BP. But uh, here, check out this goal. This is what uh, I went and looked at a game. And oh. uh, yeah, so he's got some dangle <laughs> and, and a really good shot, as you'll see on this clip. He put it top corner snipe. Yeah. Um, he had two goals, two assists in this game. He was very impressive. Um, but he uh, he went to the that one with the netting that we we're showing there. He um, it's a U nineteen tournament that they have every year with a bunch of European teams, and so it's typically you know guys that are uh, late birthdays that weren't able to play. Like his name's Holenka, but he never got to play at the Holenka. So, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunate there, but, um, but he, he really left a good impression at that tournament. He had two points in all three games, uh, top center for the Czech team played a decent two way game. Um, as you can see in these highlights, he's got really good hands and, uh, also has a, has an excellent shot. So you like the offensive toolbox that he's got. And he's also, he's about 6'1". Um, skating is the one thing that maybe you notice uh, when he's uh, when he's tired that uh, the, the stride's a little short. So there's a bit of concern with that. He's not, I wouldn't say he's an elite skater, but I think it's more a question of just needing, uh, you know, more endurance, stamina, strength, and uh, that'll come because certainly at the start of shifts, he, uh, he's got a pretty good burst and his skating isn't, I don't think is an issue, but you see there taking a hit to make a play, you know, uh, good eye hand coordination that he showed on that, on that play. He's, you know, he's got a knack for the deflecting pucks that are off the ice and, um, but really soft hands and a, and a really good shot. He's got a good one timer from the point. He plays on the point a lot on the power play, which I, I always like, uh, I guess it, it, well, it, it shows that the, the kid, you know, he, he's got a good point shot, but also he's basically the quarterback on mm -hmm. the power play of that team. So, um, you know, good vision and good shot, always a good starting point, right. When it comes to offensive skills. So, uh, the question will be, can he, can he play a middle line role? at center in the NHL. And I think there's some potential for that. You look at that shot. He just, <laughs> that's, that's an excellent, like he's got a real, he's got a bomb of a shot and a quick hard wrist shot. So, uh, and also has good edge work. So there's a lot of tools there that, that are impressive that make you think that he might have a shot at being a, uh, a middle line, middle line center in the NHL. And with that being the case, I, I I see him. This would be my riser of the week because I hadn't watched him before this U nineteen, and didn't even know really know about him. And then watched him at that tournament, got some feedback from a crossover scout that was there, uh, had a had a look at him. He's uh, just like Mark, Marcus, I'd say. He's probably some someone that you'll look at in the fifty to eighty range, somewhere in there. And uh, for a guy that wasn't even on my list two weeks ago, that's, you know, yeah. he jumped up quite a bit and uh, he's impressed me. And if he keeps it up the rest of the year in the uh, Czech uh, juniors, he's had a, he's had some games in the extra league as well. So, you know, they're already looking at him as a pro prospect at the, at the, uh, at the Czech in the Czech league. Um, I think he's a, he's probably the second after, at this point, there aren't a lot of uh, Czech prospects in this draft, and I'd say after Juracek, he might be the uh, second Czech to go in this draft class that, that's playing in Czechia. So I think you'll get uh, – hopefully we we get to uh, – uh, there will be another U19 tournament, and guys will uh, get over. I think the word's out that this kid's pretty good. Talked to a couple of scouts that know know that he had a good tournament. 
So uh, the NHL scouts will be taking another trip over to Europe and hopefully they get to see him. They make a point of going to see him and I get a little more feedback from him because I think he's uh, one of the guys that's, that's rising on the draft list. You'll see, you'll see him higher up in draft list next time around. Just from those, just from those clips. And I, and I haven't watched him a, a full game. That was those clips were my first look at him, but he looked kind of like a guy that, that has some, has some upside there. Like he looks kind of a little bit, a little bit raw, but he has the, yeah. the, the raw tools. That's like, okay, if this, if this kid f- fills out, puts on 20 pounds, maybe gets a little bit quicker. He's there's some ability there. Yeah. Very good hands. That yeah, one, for sure. You know, that one goal uh, really uh, stood out. It was one of the nicest uh, dangles I've seen. Yeah. Uh, this year. So, yeah. and then the next clip, he, you know, top corner, uh, He's got some goal scoring ability. So, uh, you know, when you've got NHL level shot and NHL level hands, it's, it's, a, and he's 6 1. Hmm. It's know, never a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't see him last. Like, I'd be surprised if he's not taken somewhere in the top three rounds. Fair enough. Fair enough. Miroslav Holinka, keep an eye on that name. Um, Rocco, we thank you as always for your insight uh, and your time. We will see you next week, my friend. Take care. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank All you. All right. Rocco Zapia. Great stuff, as always, from him. Now, Grant, we're getting into our Habs prospect of the week. This week, we'd like to highlight the most recent AHL All-Star representing the Laval Rocket, that being Logan Mayu. Let's have a look. Yep. Well, Logan had uh, had a good weekend against the Marlies there Pretty good. Uh, last weekend. Yep. Got uh, gotten that scrap. They did pretty well in, and then uh, next night he uh, three point night. So we're giving him his due for uh, for having a solid week. Uh, he just keeps improving. Like, um, I mean, in his last sixteen games, he has sixteen points after starting uh, his pro career with sixteen points in his first twenty nine. So, uh, and, and I mean, in those sixteen games, he's plus ten. He's more points than goals against, which is always just an, an outstanding stat if you ever yeah. see it, you know, um, and that's what he's been doing. So, I mean, he just keeps improving. Um, he logged 26.50 in their 7-1 win, the last game he played, which is uh, including including 224 on the PK. So he's, uh, he's getting the ice time. He just keeps improving defensively. Here's a... Uh, I threw in a couple of clips of him just being physical and defending yeah. w- really well, you know, in uh, this is a game against Utica uh, a couple of weeks ago, just to give you an idea of how his defensive game has come. And then, you know, the nice back pass to the, he's not turning over the puck a lot. He's being quite conscientious with the puck. He makes a really good first outlet pass, but he's physical too. This is what I like about his game is he uses his size uh, quite effectively. There's a double, the old double D on there that knocked down the two guys at once. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, I just, I like the physical edge to his game. And he's, uh, you know, he, he's, he's really developing his defensive game. And I also like the fact that the Canadians are, uh, this one kind of this was a lucky one there. Just threw this in. I don't know how that snuck through, but we'll take it. And he, uh, but I I like the fact that the Canadians are are keeping him down mm-hmm. in uh, Laval. Okay, here's the uh, here's the hit. Yeah, uh, that was beautiful. And then, uh, uh, you know, yeah, be, I don't know. Blind Easy was kind of like, geez, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. To, tackle this guy and then he he's pretty tough once the two linesmen were in between you know but <laughs> he uh we, we'll show that it shows i'm not sure what he was all <laughs> Boom. but the guy's the guy's helmet flew right off eh? you notice it not good. and then <laughs> it shows the strength i don't know i wish we'd had a better camera angle but i think he got a pretty good shot in there yeah right at the start but uh I don't know. I mean, that was the highlight of the week. Just him, uh, him beating up on a on a least prospect. That 
that that made it. You know, he he didn't even have yep. to have a three point night the next night. He was he was getting the nod as the prospect of the week, regardless. Yeah, that of always it. puts a smile on our faces. Uh, <laughs> but the profile the profile is is so exciting, right? It's a big body, physical, right handed, offensively minded defenseman, and he's performing. He's doing really really well, and and. Yeah. I, I think he's exceeding my expectations, at least, right? First year pro, uh, he's, he's he is the guy in Laval right now. Like he is getting all the assignments, he's getting all the responsibilities, and he's thriving. So it's right now, right? I'm not getting ahead of myself, but right now it's making Marc Bergevin and Trevor Timmons look pretty good. Again, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're early saying this, but yeah that that pick got a lot of flack at the time understandably so he himself did not want to get drafted but the fact that they took a risk on him because they loved him that much and now it's showing why uh Habs fans should be pretty pleased with this uh and and should expect to see Logan in the NHL in the near future I'm I'm not saying soon because I I, I agree with you what, you what you said there keeping him in Laval in a good situation where you know he's going to succeed because he has right now you know, this this yeah. is a perfect situation for him, but I think he's going to be ready for the NHL sooner than we thought. And uh, I'd love to see uh, the the snake's reaction to that. <laughs> always yeah. when I hear when I hear Logan, I always think of the snake. Uh, yeah, he has yeah. Pretty strong opinions about Logan, and, and hey, everybody's entitled to their opinions. So uh, <laughs> just a, a thought for Snake today. Uh, but Grant, did you have any uh, final remarks? Did they call up? Did they call up a defenseman? No. I don't think so, eh? No. Because Gooley's, Gooley's obviously not – he's going to be okay. Yeah. But I guess they're just going with uh, the group that they have right at the moment. But that tells you that they're not – you know, that would have been an opportunity to call them up, I think. But they're they're taking their time with them, being patient with them. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe if Kovacevic or uh, Savard – or both of them get traded at the deadline, then you might see him. Yeah, we'll, we may see him at the end of the year for a bit. But I think they want him for a playoff. They want him for a good yeah. long playoff run in uh, Laval, and uh, be a bit, go to guy because he's still. We we have to keep in mind that he only played about a hundred junior games. You know, so. Exactly. He's he needs the experience. He needs to be playing twenty minutes a game, and he is. I mean, twenty six the other night for a rookie uh, AHL defenseman. You gotta like it. It means yeah. he, you know he's developing. He's getting the reps. He's getting the experience, and he's just getting better. I mean, he's almost doubled his point uh, totals in the last sixteen games of what he was doing the the first uh, thirty. You know, so. Uh, that's very encouraging. Um, I think, uh, he's got top four, uh, you know, second pairing at the least, I think is his upside and he could be a first pairing guy. So obviously they, they figure that Reinbacher will be the, the first pairing guy and that's fine. Yeah. If he can be a 15 goal scoring, you know, power play guy that plays on your second second uh pairing that that's pretty uh that's pretty enticing so very that, that, yeah. that's get only getting better defensively and has a physical edge and size so uh future's looking bright for uh the canadians on the blue line indeed indeed it is good time to be a abs fan so uh that'll about wrap it up for today guys thank you so much for tuning in as always we invite you to go check out recruits.ca for all your coverage on the draft, on the Habs, anything you could want. We got the rankings on there. We're going to have, Grant, you got any interviews lined up uh, coming up? No, we're uh, talking to scouts, right? Coming to yeah, no, scouts. I've been uh, I've been um, uh, putting all my uh, profile, getting my profiles beefed up. Uh, had a lot of videos that were in the hopper there that I hadn't, uh, you have to edit and put them, you know, mm -hmm. highlight them and all that. But there, I had tons of them that that were just sitting there, and I've been uh, been hard at it the last few days getting those up on the profiles. So if you click, you go to the uh, rankings and you click on the player, the profile comes up, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, putting up 
uh, NHL scouts comments because they've I wait until after January till they've seen everybody a couple times and they've got a better idea to get their opinions. And uh, I've been getting those, uh, getting them all up on all of the prospects and then including the videos that w that Rocco, myself, and now John, Jonathan Catoni is going to be contributing to uh, in the second half here. He's over, he just landed in Australia actually mm. today. He's going to school there, but... Wow. He's going to have time uh, in the evenings to uh, do video work, and uh, which works out perfectly because we have to share uh, the site that we get the videos from. And uh, um, while you sleep, I mean, he's uh, on prime, <laughs> time, prime time in Australia is you know five p.m. till uh, midnight. There is like two a.m. till eight a.m. here, yeah. and we're not you know, typically on the, you know, online at that point. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to have guys scouting almost 24 hours a day here down the stretch, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for recruits. So the, the profiles are going to be packed. Yeah. And I mean, it's a buck 99 a month for uh prospect coverage Canadian. So, uh, you know, got to say it's well worth the uh, the two bucks to uh, to get a subscription. Without a doubt, without a doubt, and you can always subscribe to this channel here because we're you know an, an extension of recruits, right? That, that's the name is in it, but uh, we we talk prospects here, and we're going to be ramping up as the draft approaches. We always got some great guests on. If you haven't seen it already, go check it out. We got some great interviews. So. Uh, as always, we thank you for tuning in and supporting the show. Let us know in the comments if you would trade for Trevor Zegers. That's our question of the day there. Uh, and, and what you would be willing to give up. <laughs> Thumbs down for Grant. I'm in the middle. Rocco's also, you know, near the bottom. Uh, but uh, it's an interesting conversation and, and one that could be resolved very soon. So keep an eye out on that. Uh, Grant, thank you for your time. Rocco, as always, he's, he's an amazing part of the show. And thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.